Welcome to Location, the local to news program. I'm Patrick Gallagher. And I'm Melissa Menzer, and here's your news now. And these are your top stories in the Locator. The goal of Cabrini's Justice Matters curriculum is to help students learn about and solve global issues. By taking the engagements with the Common Good classes each year, students study ways to deal with major problems in society. The knowledge students gain can be applied to real-world situations. For specific information about Cabrini's groundbreaking curriculum, visit thelocator.com. Three years ago, Living and Learning Communities started at Cabrini to improve experiences of first-year students. Beginning with only two groups of students who lived together and took classes together, the number of communities has grown to seven. Each Living and Learning Community gives its members a unique experience based on different academic themes. Health Services provided students with a Healthy Heart Screening Day. Let's check in with Jenny to find out more. February celebrates Go Red for Heart Health Month. Students were provided with a screening day for cholesterol and blood pressure. Let's take a look at the festivities. Today we're going uh, red for Heart Health Day and we're offering free cholesterol checks as well as free blood pressure for, for everyone here. And um, it's really important you know, for students and, and everybody to be aware of um, a baseline of what their numbers are so that they can take action now to have a healthy heart. Blood pressure, to keep it real simple, uh, they like to say that your number should be a little less than 120 over 80. So if you're going for a good range, you want to fall a little bit under 120 as your top number, which is your systolic number. And you want to be a little bit below 80, which is your bottom number, your diastolic number. Students learn the basics for healthy total cholesterol and ways to keep yourself at a healthy level. This is Healthy Heart Month, and uh, Cabrini College is celebrating today with Go Red for Heart Health and health services, Barb Amrod and I, we're the nurses in health services, we're doing free cholesterol screenings. Um, it's always good to know what your baseline total cholesterol is. Um, sometimes people have issues with cholesterol at a younger age or they have a family history, so it's always a good thing to know about where your cholesterol is, even at a young age. Cholest total cholesterol, which is what we're testing, should be below 200 came down here today to get my blood pressure and cholesterol took because it high cholesterol and high blood pressure runs in my family so just checking up to be sure. As a part of Healthy Heart Day, the marketplace provided students with an alternative healthy choice for lunch. I'm making a salad for the healthy day. Some tomatoes. Some chicken. It's already diced. A little bit of dressing, and we mix it all together, and then it's ready to go on a plate. And it's ready to be served. This salad's really good. It's good to eat healthy, you know, it gives me energy for my game later, and it's good for your heart. Be sure to stay healthy and eat right. I'm Jenny Riggies for Location. Now back to you at the news desk. The turmoil in Egypt hits very close to home for one Eastern University professor. Joe Saba grew up in Egypt and moved to the United States when he was 18 to get an education. Saba's family lived through the political unrest for the past couple of weeks while the people of Egypt forced the resignation of their president. Students look for internships each semester to get work experience and to build a good resume. A representative from the Washington Center visits Cabrini every year to talk about internship opportunities in Washington, D.C. Cabrini has a long history of placing students in both political and media internships through the Washington Center. And those were your top stories in the Locator. To find out more, pick up a copy around campus or visit thelocator.com. Cabrini celebrates Founders Day each February to honor the birthday of the college founders, Sister Ursula Infante. With this year's theme, Immigration, let's see what was said. On February 22nd, Cabrini hosted its 10th annual Founders Day at the Bruckman Memorial Chapel of St. Jude's. This year's Founders Day celebrated the Year of the Immigrant. 
I consider myself and uh, being a, a bridge person. You know, a, a bridge uh, in, in, in a Spanish ministry we have a, a, an expression, gente puente, being uh, bridges, people, people that are bridges, you know, because we need them. Bridges that can connect, can connect diversity, cultures, groups of people, because um, I, I have the, the gift. I the laws, the challenges, the tremendous difficulty. You take the, the immigration reform and you drop that into a conversation, there's that side and there's that side and there's no one in the middle. No one in the middle. It is volatile. It is volatile. I don't have the solution, but I do know and I believe with all my heart that the church has to be part of that conversation. The gospel message has to be part of that conversation because if it's not, if it's not, we're going to err tremendously on one side or the other. Unveiled this year was a statue of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, placed to the southeast corner of the college chapel. Reporting for location, I'm Ali Jeter. Newly elected Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin has become a national figure overnight after setting off protests over the proposed state budget cuts. Protesters have been surrounding the state capitol for the past week and calling Governor Scott Walker names such as bully. Budget protests are spreading to other states as all levels of government are struggling to deal with budget deficits. On Saturday, February 19th, Cabrini experienced a short power outage. Here are some tips of what to do in the event of another outage. This past weekend, Cabrini College was shaken up when winds and falling trees contributed to power lines being knocked over and lights being knocked out. While the power is only out for a few hours, it reminds us that we need to be prepared for whatever Mother Nature throws at us. Here are some tips that the Center for Disease Control website offers the public in the event of a power outage. Let's start with water. Be wary of using water for drinking or hygienic purposes in the event of a power outage. Water purification systems may be disrupted when the electricity goes out. The CDC recommends that you use boiled, bottled, or treated drinking water in the event of an emergency. Here's some quick tips on the safety of water. Boiling water is a good way to get rid of harmful bacteria and parasites. Assuming you have the resources to do so, bring the water to a rolling boil for at least one minute. Finally, be sure to check with your local authorities to assure that the drinking water is safe. Food safety is also an important thing to know in the event of a power outage. If the power outage is less than two hours, Food is still safe as long as you keep the refrigerator and freezer doors closed. Finally, use a thermometer to check the food's temperature. If the temperature is above 40 degrees, throw it out. For more in-depth information, check out cdc.gov. On location, I'm Ian O'Neill. And now let's take a trip around the world. Thousands of protesters crowded into Pearl Square in Bahrain late Tuesday in a rally against the politics of the Middle East. What started out as an online call for a day of rage evolved into a live group of demonstrators in the heart of Manaman. The protest grew stronger as parliament members announced they were suspending all participation in the legislature. Security officials across China responded quickly on Sunday after the anonymous calls for protesters to stage a Jasmine Re revolution went out over social media outlets. Even though there weren't any reports of large demonstrations, the government response caused concern. The word Jasmine Revolution was blocked from sites such as Twitter, and cell phone users could not send messages to multiple recipients at once. And now it's your trip around the world. And now let's check in with Liz and our person of the week. Hi everybody, today I have fashion designer and reality TV star Marissa Erskine here to talk to us about her fashion and experience on her show. Thank you so much for joining us, Marissa. Thank you for having me, Liz. Now, could you tell us where your inspiration for your clothes come from? What in, what influences you? Um, I'm influenced by it a lot. When I was younger, I was influenced by um, women. And uh, seeing, you know, going in a department store and seeing what women were looking for and, you know, what was lacking in a department store and, you know, people leaving on you know, satisfied and just not, you know, always feel like there was something missing um, in the market that a woman was looking for and could never find. So I definitely, when I was younger, women, all types of women, I would look at and just watch all ages and I was, 
you know, obviously very impressed by older women because I knew that they were, you know, I feel like they were glamorous and that there was just so much I could bring to their, you know, to their look, or, you know, their everyday look and to make them feel even more beautiful. Um, as I got older, things that you, things that now inspire me, you know, are, are much more subtle. I mean, it could be a color, it could be a pattern on a wall, it could be a vacation, it can be shapes in a building. You are very, very close with your mother. Did she have any sort of influence you on wanting to become a designer? Was she into fashion when she was younger? Did she show you what was hip and trendy at the time? Um, my mom isn't as, she's not into, I would say, uh, fashion at the level that I'm at now. But my mother definitely sparked interest of being fancy. And I think it was the, you know, quintessential Jersey mother. My mother liked everything, you know, bold and glittery and shiny. And if it was, you know, the bigger, the better. She liked everything very, um, you know, glamorous. And I definitely think, you know, even though she didn't sew or pattern make or drape or she didn't know the technical end of, of you know, making apparel, she definitely, you know, had an eye to put it all together to make me feel like, like a little star. Now, you said your mom is a... Uh a big Jersey woman. Now you have been dubbed the title of Queen of Jersey, which leads me in on to our next point. You um, were in a reality show, You're a Cut Off, which is currently airing on VH1. Could you tell us about your experience, why you decided to do that show? Um, I decided to do the show because, uh, well, first it was, you know, really good for America to kind of just to get the idea of my personality first. And a lot of my personality is in my clothing. So I think if America can get a little bit of who I am and where I come from and, you know, my mentality and my mind frame, it really, you know, it's very intimate when you know a designer and you wear her clothes and you can connect to her as a person as well and not just a clothing label or a piece of fabric hanging on a hanger, that she's really a person. There's really people designing everything we wear and everything, you know, we put on. Somebody engine that and there was a huge process behind it that was thought out to get there. Now... I have seen Snooki in one of your dresses, actually, when she went to court for <laughs> her uh, little incident on the Jersey Shore. Who else should we be expecting to wear your clothes? Are there any big names that you know of right now that are in contact with your people? Um, well, uh, Taylor Swift, she wore a t-shirt of mine from my new t-shirt line. And I now have um, interest from a lot of big pop star stylists, to name a few, like Katy Perry, Rihanna. Um, even Rachel Bilson's uh, stylist has contacted me. So contacting you is a very good start. Um, you know, it depends on what looks I'll pull for them. Or sometimes I may just make something custom and see if, you know, if it's to their liking. If not, I can change it and make it, you know, whatever they want. But it definitely has a Rissa signature look to it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It thank was so you, nice Liz, having, for having you. Me. Now back to Pat and Alyssa at the news desk. Now let's check in with Holly for your sports coverage. What do you have for us this week, Holly? I know the basketball season's ending. It is, Pat. The women's basketball season ended Thursday, February 17th against the Newman University Knights with a loss of 73-69. to Overall this season, the Lady Cavs finished 10-15 and, and they finished 9-7 and in the Colonial States Athletic Conference. Freshman Brittany Sandone earned CSAC honorable mention distinctions, while sophomore Melissa Kudzmas received the Lady Cavs CSAC Sportsmanship Award. While the women's season ended, the men's season is still going strong. The Cavs defeated Newman University in the second round of the CSAC playoffs with a final score of 79-76. to In the game, sophomore Corey Lemon scored a team-high 21 points, while senior Dom Farello added 16 points and 11 rebounds. Let's check in with Ali Rodolico to see some of the action of the game and to hear what the seniors of the team had to say about the win. The Cabrini men's basketball team battled the Newman Knights in the semifinal game Tuesday night at the Nerney Fieldhouse. After shooting only 13 for 40 in the first half, the Cavs were down 35-33 at halftime. Newman didn't let up after halftime, going point for point. The intense game came down to the final 30 seconds. Senior Lamar Fisher stopped Newman's best player on their final possession, resulting in a 79-76 Cavs victory. The Cavs will play at home against number two seed Gwyneth Mercy on Friday night at 7 p.m. for the championship. Hey guys, I'm Ali Rodolico here with senior Lamar Fisher, where him and the rest of the men's basketball team just beat Newman University in a nail biter, 79 to 76. Lamar, the pressure was all on you at the end of the game. There was about 30 seconds left. You were on number four. He was shooting all night, making all the shots. What were you thinking at the end of the game when you blocked that shot? I mean, it was either go hard or go home right there. I 
my teammates told me, he said, Lamar, we need you to get a big stop for us. So I just looked and said, yo, guys, I got it. I said, I'll guard them, and I'll make sure we take this home, and we'll go to the championship. So I'm real happy. I'm real happy. Now, at halftime, you guys were 13 for 40 for shots. What was Coach Khan telling you in the locker room that you needed to do to get this victory? He's just saying, um, be patient. Like, our shot's going to come. And just keep doing what we're doing. We're moving the ball. Our shots are, we're getting open shots, but they just weren't falling. But just, just, just keep staying, like, play strong, you know what I mean? And we got our shots and started hitting the second half and pulled away. Now you guys have a championship on Friday night. It's either going to be against Gwinnett or Keystone. Who would you rather play? Um, they're both tough teams, man. I really don't want to play either one. But um, if it came down to it, it'll be a good match against Gwinnett. We got two wins on both teams. So, I mean, whatever team we see in the championship, we'll definitely um, – Give them a run for their money. All right. Thank you very much. Excellent game again. Thanks. I'm here with senior Don Farello, who just got finished playing this amazing game at the Nerney Fieldhouse. What are you thinking right now? Oh, I'm just happy we won. Um, we expected to be here at this point in the season. So it's, uh, it was a little bit more uh, bumpy than we figured, but we got there. Ugly or pretty, doesn't matter. What do you think it's going to take to win the championship and bring home the CSAC again? Um, the same type of effort as tonight, just uh, – a little bit more crisp, a little bit more, a uh, little cleaned up, S smarter play. Now, we notice in every other game these past four years that you've been here, you've had this T-shirt underneath your jersey. Is that a superstitious thing, or did you just want to intimidate the other team tonight with your guns? No, there's nothing No, there's nothing to it. Uh, when we played up in, uh, I forget what team we played up in Scranton, but I had the T-shirt underneath, and it uh, it got too sweaty, and it started to stick to my arms, so like my, I, could, I didn't have the range of motion, so I just took it off, and it worked out. <laughs> it's really nothing to it. All right, well, great game tonight. Good luck on Friday. Thank you very All much. All right, I'm Allie Rodolico here at the Nerney Fieldhouse. Back to you at the news desk. That's all I have for you this week. Be sure to stay tuned into location every week for more sports coverage. Thanks, Holly, and now let's check in with Danielle for your red carpet rants. Hey, guys, Danielle here with your entertainment news. Just when Paris Hilton thought that turning 30 couldn't get any worse, someone reportedly stole her delicious pink birthday cake. Apparently, a drunk party crasher got into her party without an invitation and ran off with the cake. The cake ended up being donated to a homeless shelter and was eaten entirely. Exciting news for Chelsea Handler fans. Apparently, NBC is turning Handler's pop popular book, Are You There, Vodka? It's Me, Chelsea, into a TV show. Laura Preppen from That 70s Show is set to play Handler in her earlier years. The show will feature Handler's crazy antics involving plenty of sex and alcohol. Well, that's all I have for you this week from the red carpet. Now I'm off to Hollywood for spring break to get the latest dirt on all your favorite celebs. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's check in with Ian for Just a Thought. Hey, it's Ian with Just a Thought. The internet certainly can give you a new outlook on life. There's just so much information out there, and you can learn so much about the world. Here's what I learned this week. People love to humiliate themselves. Let's take all of those lip-syncing kids and adults who dance around and pretend to sing. They look stupid, yet like a car wreck, I can't look away. We have such a double standard. We hate it when celebrities do it, but it's okay for the dude on YouTube to lip-sync a song? No, it's not okay. Either sing or don't. Lip-syncing belongs in the privacy of your own bedroom with the camera off. If you can't dance or sing, don't bother posting it on the internet for the world to see. Try something like crocheting or catching goldfish in your mouth, but for the love of all things great, don't pretend to be good at it. You're not. It hasn't worked for anyone yet. I mean, and that's just a thought. Thanks, Ian. Well, that's all we have time for you this week. Be sure to check us out at thelocator.com and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Alyssa Menser. And I'm Patrick Gallagher. Have a great spring break, Cabrini.